Hey there, game developers. It is me, T Tutorial Master Titan Hex, here for yet another lesson. This time, we will be doing this on the right side of the first tab of the event commands. That includes the party section and the actor section. So this should go pretty quick. We might even be able to get into the movement section. Um, there's really not a lot that isn't self-explanatory here in these two. Um, it's, it's usually going to be something that you're going to play around with. In the party section, you have change gold, so you can add items, uh, gold to your party. You can change the weapons and armors that your party has in their inventory, and you can change which party members are available. So you can actually create a party member swap out screen using the change party function here. And you can do that using like show choice or a whole bunch of other things in combination with the change party thing. Uh, you can even use show picture to create this sort of um, menu uh, where you pick characters using pictures. We'll probably get into something like that a little later on. For now, we're not too worried about it. So I've done it before and I can show you guys how to do it later on. So the change party one is probably one of the, the more useful for systems, but there is still some awesome things you can dish out um, using the party section. You can start giving out chest items, you can create special treasure chests, and things of the like for that one. Next, we have the actor section. The actor section allows you to change a whole bunch of stats on actors, and you can find you, you will find that a lot of this can be useful in the battle, uh, the troops section, the event battles, uh, or battle events. Yeah, battle events under the troops section. A lot of this stuff can be useful, but it can be also useful on the map. Now we have change HP, MP, and TP. So we have some pretty neat little functions here that we can alter and change as needed. Uh, we can change, we, we can create our custom restore points or things like that, but recover all usually works a little better for that. So the recover all allows you to maximize HP or things like that, but you can create little custom um, damage things or maybe special shrines or things like that that have random effects. Next, we have recover all uh, and change state. So we can add a state to the party. Well, we can add a state to certain actors. The thing here is that you either can do the entire party or you have to choose one of a specific actor. So 001, I would specifically give Harold that state. Then you have the variable, which would allow us to save a variable and then give it to a specific actor. So if we know that actor five is say Harold or something like that, or actor one is Harold, we can always give Harold a specific um, a specific state. It's, it's nothing quite uh, super useful. We can also remove states by the way, but it's nothing super useful. Uh, we can also remove uh, in party an actor. We can remove items and weapons. Um, there are ways to say if you want to have a prison scene. Um, I believe there are some ways to sort of save what the player has. And usually that is used through control variables. You would save a character or uh, the party's weapons and items and just check how many possessions they have of each. It'd be a very in-depth system, but it can be done. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, we can use a whole bunch of these to just dish out little rewards or things like that, uh, change EXP, maybe when you, you complete a quest, you get that, or we could have even permanent states that we can add to the player. Things like that, uh, like a boon system, but things like that can be very useful. Uh, we also have changed level, so automatic level ups or level downs. We can change a parameter like max HP or um, attack defense. So we can even create systems like a, a talent tree that gives you boost to HP or MP, or we can create a uh, skill tree or, or what else? Let's see. We can create a like Final Fantasy X um, sphere grid or things like that. Just special level up systems we can use right here with change parameter, which, which can be really cool. And I'll show you guys how to do that a little later on. Uh, change skill, great for if you want to make a skill system. 
We have change equipment if you want to force a player to equip or not equip specific items. So uh, we can make it so that they equip head items or stuff like that. And then we can even seal them um, using a trait system. We'd have to we'd have to play around a little bit with that one. Uh, but then we'd have change name so we can change a character's name. Maybe their name gets revealed or something like that. Change class um, so you can create class change systems or even uh, over here in scene control you have name input so you can make a system where you recruit like mercenaries or things like that those are options uh, that we can create and I'll, I'll show you how to do systems like that a little later on next we have change nickname of course that's for the most part can be useful it's mainly used something in profile and we can also change a character's bio uh, the profile that you know makes up the character in the status screen uh, what the, like a quick description so maybe we could reveal more information or things like that um, yeah neat little things like that we can do so keep that in mind we have some awesome stuff available to us next we have the movement section so the movement section is extremely useful we can uh, transfer players to specific maps Usually this is very useful for, say, a, um, I think you can create your own, here, uh, quick event creation. You can create your own transfer events using this. Um, you'll use that to sort of transfer between maps. Just keep that in mind. So I have the transfer player, which I can also create saved. Um, I can save a players X, Y, and the map they're on so that they can have teleport points. Um, or I could save them manually, like myself, through the game. And then you can have special uh, teleport points that you can use. So there's, there's just options here. This is great for a whole bunch of different things. Uh, we can make it so we teleport back to an airship by saving the airship location when we get off. Or things like that. Next, we have direction. Uh, that is where you are facing, and fade is how the screen fades in and out when you transfer. So there's not a lot of options here. You can have none or white or black. Um, we also can choose which way they're facing when they transfer. Typically, retain is probably the best option uh, for most of your transfer needs. Uh, followed by set vehicle location. So we can set the uh, location of vehicles. Maybe we we catch a vehicle or like uh, it, it appears suddenly or, or something like that anything like that can happen and we can just uh, teleport it to our location or maybe we can call special ones to us uh, great for like special whistles for maybe a mount or something like that very useful great to have let me check something nope okay they used to have uh, land vehicles but apparently uh, not not so much now so or did they anyways uh, we can also set the location of events so we can create a event location uh, we, or, or we can transfer an event to a specific location. This is going to be usually on the same map we're on. You can't really transfer one event from one map to another. So just keep that in mind. But this is a good way to, to transfer or switch events around. Um, we can maybe te teleport a switch to us or things like that um, little stuff like that you, you might not use this one a lot but there are definitely some specific uses for this puzzles and things of the like that'll make this very useful scroll map uh, this is sort of how we control our camera so think of this more as the camera uh, we can move the camera around uh, using this guy and we can choose the speed at which the camera moves uh, and where how like which way it moves this is good for special like events uh, I can think of several uses like a special crane um, or or anything where we control something or maybe you're moving the map around or, or panning to a specific enemy or, or like a, the king you're panning up to see him more things like that this is basically panning the map and it's very useful for cutscenes Next is set movement route, and this one you will probably use a lot. This is especially useful for cutscene. It's going to be what makes characters move around and talk and trace the map and, and, and have their own little routes. Or it can animate things by using the turn. 
functions you saw uh, with the door and the common events uh, this would animate the thing um, that you're trying to manipulate and you can move it around you can make it jump uh, you can make it step one foot forward uh, you this is how you would do a random enemy movement you you wouldn't really want to use random too much like turn it random or move it well move it random probably not so much but you can do like turn it random or move um, in specific directions even the um, you can do eight directions using this guy so there, there's a lot of points where this will be very useful and you'll be really well accustomed to this screen there's a, there's just a ton that we can do with it uh, we can change the opacity blend mode is sort of a um, it's it's sort of how the character blends into the background um, it's it's a little tricky that's when we get into picture you'll you'll understand blend modes a little better i'll sort of go into those um but for now it's it's something you you won't need to know a lot about so just pay attention to the picture tutorial for that information and then you can place sound effects in the move routes so that you don't have to break up um the move route then you have script for your own special sort of plugins or things like that then we have change image, change opacity. Change image is great when you want to transform an event into another event uh, picture. So I, I would change it, maybe like make the character look like they fell down. Um, next we have through, which allows us to walk through our events. Uh, transparency, which allows us, of course, to make them transparent. Direction fix. I went over this in the event uh, tutorial in the beginner course so direction fix makes it so that the player is always facing one direction and even if you talk to them they won't turn to face you uh, you have to turn it on and off and there's specific uses where this will be very important next is stepping animation uh, walking animation we can turn those on and off um, we we went over those in the event thing so speed and all that all of that was kind of covered there same with switch on switch off those were um, those you should know from the Switch tutorial, how to play with. It just allows us to not have to, you know, split it up. And then we just have a whole bunch of different turn ones. And these are great for, especially the turn uh, degrees and things like that. Those are great for maybe monsters, making monsters have special move routes and wander in specific directions. Um, you can do some really cool stuff with that. And when we, we get into the monster move routes and setting up... Um, on touch encounters we'll get more into setting up a good move route but for now just know that they exist uh, and this chooses which event is moving you can move a specific event which is great for when you're setting up like cutscenes and things like that or you can make it so it's specifically this event which is great for if you have like um, commands or you just don't you want to you might want to copy and paste this or maybe you want to use what is it uh, shoot common events uh this will always specify the common event that it's in uh, and then you can just specify that the player is the one moving so great things there and lastly get on and off vehicle this one should be pretty spec uh pretty easy it just toggles you on and off of a vehicle which can be very useful um usually it's a vehicle that you're standing on uh this is kind of a, a odd one um, you probably won't use it a ton, but there's definitely like maybe cutscenes or things like that where you, you will use it. So that's kind of it. Uh, we'll get into character, picture, uh, maybe even screen and audio a little later. But uh, I have a feeling that character and picture are going to be their own because of just how in-depth they're going to be. So just get ready for that. Uh, right now, we've covered just three different sections and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, it didn't even take that long. So uh, thank you for tuning in to this tutorial. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. As always, like, comment, subscribe, show your support. Uh, show me that you guys care. If you have any help that you need, just let me know and I will help you out. If I can't, maybe somebody else can. And we'll be getting into some pretty cool stuff soon here. Um, we have about... 
four more tutorials I'm going to say before we start getting into advanced stuff where I teach you how to make really awesome systems. And we're just going to be taken off from there. Uh, we got some cool stuff that I'm going to show you with that. But you, it is important that you build up these building blocks so that you understand these awesome systems we're going to make. So um, I have my own Patreon account. I always appreciate the support there. You can get some awesome goodies, some resources. Um, you can get tutorials ahead of time. I'll start releasing those uh, a week ahead of time on the Patreon before I release them on uh, YouTube. So it, it's good to jump on those. Um, and yeah, thank you. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.